The second verification technique is the differential bug detection and uh, repair. So, in this technique, given two sanitizer functions, a target sanitizer and a reference sanitizer, we're going to check if the functions uh, are equivalent by comparing the results of the string analysis of the two function of the two functions. Uh, if we do not find any difference, then we are not going to report anything. If we find a difference, then we are going to report a possible bug and we are going to generate a patch to remove the difference between the two functions. So, what is the intuition behind differential uh, repair? Um, the idea is to exploit the redundancy in input validation and sanitization code in web applications. So, for example, as we have seen uh, before, for the same input field here, the email address input field, we have two functions, one on the client side and one on the server side, both validating and, sanitiz and sanitizing the same field. It makes sense to compare these two functions uh, to each other to make sure that um, they are not different. If the two functions are different, especially if the server side function accepts and returns more than the client side function, which means it's less constrained than the client side function, then this is very bad and serious and it may result actually in a vulnerability. You always want your server side to be as strong as the client side or, more, or stronger. Uh, also, you can give in your, uh, an old version of your web application where you know that, for example, the input validation and sanitization uh, for an email address is correct and a new version uh, uh, where you're not sure about it you can actually extract the two sanitizer functions and compare the new version to the old version. Um, and if there is a difference, then we can repair the difference gen by generating a patch function. So, let me give you an example from a real-world application of two functions, a client-side and a server-side function uh, in, an, in a J2W application that are different. So, this is the client-side function written in JavaScript and it validates email addresses. What the function do basically is that one of the things that it does is that if the email address is empty then it will accept the email address. The corresponding function on the server side, the Java one, trims the uh, input and then checks if the input is empty. Now what is the difference between the two? If we give an input of white spaces then the client is going to reject this input saying that this input is not uh, is uh, invalid, while the server side is going to accept the uh, input saying that it's valid. And this is a bad error, <clears throat> as we have said uh, before. So, um, how do we find this uh, uh, inconsistency or the difference between the two functions? Okay, given the target function and the reference function, we are going to compute the post images of the two functions or the output, the possible output of the two functions. And then we are going to compare this output to see if, if, it is, uh, if the two sets are uh, equivalent. If the two sets are not equivalent, then which means that there is a difference in the output, some uh, values that are returned, accepted and returned by the target but not by the reference, then we are going to report a bug, an inconsistency. Let's take a look at some of the experimental uh, results that we have <coughs> that we have done. So we applied this uh, technique on uh, seven J2W web uh, applications, looking for inconsistencies between the client side code and the server side code. And uh, the analysis phase of the functions after we extracted the functions, maximum time it took to analyze all the functions uh, in JGossip was 3.2 seconds for all the functions that we extracted. And this one actually has the uh, maximum number of, uh, uh, maximum uh, uh, run time for, uh, for the analysis. This is the static analysis phase, the string analysis phase. And um, in general, we found all these differences where the client is uh, 
more relaxed than the server. It accepts more than the server. And at the same time, we found these two um, uh, errors where the server is more relaxed than the client. So the server accepts things that the client should not accept. And we consider these to be serious bugs since they may lead to vulnerabilities. Uh, the, in terms of memory, the average memory um, uh, during the analysis that we took was about 6 megabytes. So, once we uh, discover the difference, the next step is to patch this difference, generate a repair. So, what is the goal of the repair algorithm that uh, uh, <coughs> we want to do? So, given the two functions that are not equal, we want to come up with a new function that is stronger than the two functions. What do we mean by stronger? Formally, we mean that the output of the new function is a subset of the output of the two um, functions. Um, uh, someone may say, since you have the two functions, the target and the reference, and you want a new, uh, a new stronger function that has all the constraints from the two functions, then why don't you just run the two functions one after the other, or compose the two functions? The problem is that this does not work uh, because the two functions may have the same sanitization operation that is not idempotent. So suppose that the first sanit the, to the, the both sanitizer, the target and the reference, they both escape the single quote character with a backslash. So if we give this first sanitizer the, uh, uh, the input A, B, uh, single quote C, then it is going to convert it into this input uh, by escaping the single quote. Then the second sanitizer is going to see the single quote and escape it again. But what you see here is actually the, the backslash here is, uh, is actually escaped by this backslash. And the single quote is not actually escaped. So the second escaping actually kind of rendered the first escaping obsolete. Okay, And this is a well-known security problem, which is double escaping. So, uh, what we get from this is that you cannot simply compose sanitizers to fix the difference between, the, between them. <clears throat> or to come up with a... Um, sorry, you cannot compose sanitizers to come up with a stronger one. You first need to find the difference, as we did before, and then fix this uh, difference. So, how does the um, repair algorithm work? I will start with a simple algorithm and then iteratively um, 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 come up with um, uh, more, um, more and more um, uh, patches um, so to give you the intuition um, uh, uh, of why we did the uh, more involved algorithm that we came up uh, with. So let's start with a simple algorithm. The simple algorithm basically is based on the idea of the min cut that we have uh, described in the previous uh, uh, video. So, Given the output of the two functions, we are going to find the difference where the target, uh, the output of the target that is not returned by the reference. We're going to take this difference and compute the pre-image. Okay, so this is the input that resulted in the difference here. Now we need to get rid of this input. So what we are going to do simply is use the min cut on this input. So this is the simple algorithm that we uh, we want to use. Let's try this on these two uh, simple illustrative uh, uh, functions. This is our example. So this is the function that we have seen in the um, string analysis video where we analyzed. Okay. So given this function and this function, we want to fix the target against the reference. So let's see what these functions do. This function first deletes less than. Then it checks if the input is of length uh, four characters or more. If it, if it is not, then it will accept it. If it's three characters or less, it will accept it. Otherwise, it's going to reject it. This function basically escapes a single quote with a double quote. So now, <clears throat> let's try to fix these functions. What we are going to do is that we are going to compute the post images of the two functions, and then take the difference, and then compute the pre-image of this difference. And now we want to do the min cut on the pre-image or in the on the automata that represents the pre-image. So this is the automata that represents the input strings that resulted in the difference. 
So these input strings on the resulted in the in the target output being different than the reference output. Let take a, let's take a look at some examples of these uh, strings and see if we can cut this uh, automata. If we want to cut this automata, what would happen? Okay, what kind of cut are you gonna get? So, the first example is our strings that would uh, take this path. So they are strings that contain at least one uh, less than character. The simplest uh, input is this less than. Why did these strings uh, 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 cause a difference in the output? Because given this to the target, it's going. The target is going to give us this output, while the reference is going to remove the less than. So this input actually results in a difference between the output of the target and output of the reference. And the difference here is due to sanitization operations on the reference. The second input, uh, the second path is this path. And basically this path says that if an input contains two single codes, okay, then it's going to cause a difference. Why? Because the target is going to escape these two single codes. Uh, the, and then it would generate an, uh, an output of length 4. While the reference is not going to escape these single codes, it is going to get an output of length, uh, generate an output of length 2. Now what is the problem here? The problem is there's no way that you are going to get this string as an output of the reference. Why? Because the reference is not going to output any string of length 4 or more. And this string is actually of length 4. This is a very subtle difference between the two functions. So again, this difference is a length difference. So the output of the target, the length of the output of, of some strings uh, that are output by the target, is different than the length of some strings that are output by the reference or actually there are no strings uh, there are, uh, that are output by the reference that have the same length as these strings that are output by the target there are no strings that are output by the reference that have the same length like 4 here that is output by the target and the reason because the sanitization on the target messed up uh, the, uh, the length well, the reference, cons uh, 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 the reference um, uh, um, only returns or constrains the length of, the, uh, of its output using this. Okay, so now, if we want to cut, okay, if we want to cut, then if, of course we need to cut this transition, which means that we need to delete this character less than. We also need to cut one of these transitions, so we need to cut the character single cut. Up to now, we're still kind of okay with the cut. Now, this last example, okay, this last path shows us some, some input strings that would result in a difference between the output of the target and the output of the reference. As an example, the input ABCD is going to be output by the target as ABCD, while the reference actually is going to reject this input and die. Why? Because the reference is going to, um, the constraint in the reference here, uh, this uh, input string does not satisfy the constraint in here, so it's, not, it's going to be rejected on the reference. While on the target, there's no such uh, constraint. So the difference between the two is that the reference does some validation, while the output does not do the, this, the same uh, validation. Okay. Now, again, without the reason for the difference, if we try to min-cut one of these, then this is actually a big problem. Because if, uh, if we cut these transitions, so this corresponds to a uh, number of transitions for all the characters in these ranges, all the characters from null to, um, uh, uh, to exclamation mark, and the characters between these two uh, characters and the characters. So these are about like almost all the characters of ASCII except less than and single code. So if we want to cut this transition, this means that we, wanna, we are going to delete all these characters. So, if we get this example as an input to target, we're going to get empty string, okay? While the reference is going to take this example and return it as it is. So, using the min cut only is going to be too conservative. It's going to generate a cut, it's going to generate a patch that is, that doesn't work in the actual world, okay? So the patch is going to delete everything, which is very bad. And the problem here is that 
the min-cut uh, algorithm, if you remember from the previous video, we came up with the min-cut algorithm to solve a sanitization uh, uh, problem. Okay, so it's a it's a sanitization patching technique or algorithm. Well, what we hear, what we have here, is an, uh, a validation difference between the two functions. So we need to address the validation difference between the two functions first before doing the min cut. So let's refine our algorithm here by doing a validation patch first. So what is a validation patch, or how do we generate a validation patch? So the validation patch is going to block on the target all the strings that are blocked by the reference, okay? So what we do is that we are going to compute the negative pre-image on the reference, which again, it means all the strings that are rejected by the reference function, and this is the validation patch DFA. This is the DFA that represents this set, and then we are going to take this set and reject it on the target. And we generate a validation patch here, such that all the strings will pass through this patch before going to the function. And this patch, this patch is going to uh, filter all the strings that match this automata. Why? Because this automata represents all the strings that are rejected by the reference. So of course, the target needs to reject this. Uh, the target needs to reject these uh, strings. So let's take a closer look at this automata. Notice that this automata is going to reject any string that contains four, at least four characters. Given that none of these four characters is a less than. So what happened here basically is that this, uh, <clears throat> this validation patch is not going to take care of less than here. Not going to take care of this replace operation or sanitization operation. It is just going to block the things that are blocked by this uh, branch condition. But here's the catch. We are going to say, we are going to compute the following. We say that if you are going to block all strings of length four or more after you do the sanitization operation, what should you block if you want to block before doing the sanitization operation? Okay, so this is called computing the pre-image of the string replace. What we have seen the previous in the video on the string analysis is that we computed the post image of the string replace. But here we are going backwards. We compute the pre-image of the string replace. And we actually have a, a new one-pass algorithm that just goes from the sync all the way to the, uh, from I mean the sync from the return here, all the way to the input, computing the this set of inputs, the set of inputs that are uh, uh, rejected by the reference. So now assume that we have the validation. We generate the validation patch. We got rid of the validation reference. Now let's try now the min cut. Okay. Given the validation patch, we are going to compute the post images, and then we are going to take the difference, and then given the difference, without the validation patch, this is very important, okay, we are going to compute the pre-image. Now, these are the strings that generated a difference that is not a validation difference. This is because we took care of the validation already, okay? That is we, that's why we compute the pre-image all the way to here. Because if we go back before the validation, then we are going to include the strings here. And then we are going to run in the same problem, uh, the min cut problem that we saw before. So it's very important that we stop here. Okay. So now, given this pre-image, okay, we, we want to cut it. Again, what is this pre-image? It is all the, the inputs that resulted in a different output, an output that is returned by the target, but not by the reference. But this difference is not the result of filtering operations. Okay, so now we are, we are going to do the min cut. This is the automata that we generated. By the way, all these automata are generated actually by the uh, library that we have seen in the, uh, in the string analysis video. <clears throat> so this is basically the min cut that uh, we want to take. These are the, the transitions that we want to remove such that we cut the start state from these accepting states. Okay, so uh, of course when we generate the patches we do not remove transitions, we actually remove characters from the input. 
So the characters that we are going to remove are single quote and less than. This is way much better than the previous uh, uh, algorithm because now at least we are not going to remove all the characters. But still, we are going to remove the, si the single quote. Okay? But it's, clearly, it's clear that the target actually is going to escape the single quote. Okay? So it's kind of the target when I escape the single quote, so we should not remove the single quote. We should deal with this problem, okay? We should try to find a way of, of uh, uh, getting rid of the single quote in the min cut, okay? There has to be a problem that we didn't deal with, okay? And the problem actually is uh, a length problem. So, given the validation patch, we already took care of the length. So we know that we are not going we are going to block all inputs that are of length four or more characters. But the problem is that the sanitization on the target is going to mess up with the length. So if we give the string if o single code, then the target is going to escape the single code and give us if o backslash single code. So this is something that is output by the reference but not by the target. So, now, what should we do about this? So, um, now, before, before I, let, let me just clarify one thing. So, this string, okay, although if we give this input to the reference, we are going to get if o single code without the backslash, okay? But if we give this string to the, to the reference, we are not going to get this output. It's going to be blocked. So, comparing the output of the two functions, we are not going to get this, uh, uh, this string from the reference, but we are going to get it from the target. So, how do we deal with this, uh, uh, with this uh, problem? We will generate, refine our, alg our algorithm to generate another patch in addition to the validation patch. And this patch is, uh, uh, we call this patch uh, a length patch. So we are going to generate a length patch in addition to the validation patch to deal with the previous problem. So how are we going to do this? Given the validation patch, we are going to compute the post image images of the two functions. And then given this the post image of the reference function, we are going to compute the length DFA, the size DFA. Okay? What do we mean by the size DFA? Let's assume hypothetically that this is the post image of the reference. Of course, this is not the post image of the reference that we have here. We're just going giving this example to explain what do we mean by the length DFA. So, assume that this is a post image that we have and we want to compute, and this is represented by a DFA, we want to compute the length. So the length DFA accepts all the strings of length 1, or length 3, or length 4. Why? Because we have a string here of length 1, and we have a string of length 3, and we have a string of length 4. Okay? So, we call this, we call this language the length language, and the DFA that accepts this language is the size or the length DFA. Okay? So, this basically uh, gives us, uh, it just restricts the length, it just grant, it just contains all the strings that are that have a length similar to the length of these strings. Okay, let me give you an actual uh, example. So I have these two automata. Just let me open the automata. Okay. So this is an automata, and this is the unary automata or the length automata okay these two automata okay so how did they generate this automata let me show you the code quickly so this automata represents this regular expression it is strings a a or two a's or five b's combined together uh, as, mu as much as you want so this is actually an infinite language and this infinite language is represented by this automata. Okay, so the question is given this, 
given this automata, okay, what is the length, all the possible lengths of the strings in this automata? This is the unary automata that we generate, which tells us what are the possible lengths, okay? So this tells us, without caring about the characters, okay, it just tells us that you are going to accept strings of length 2 and 5 and all the lengths more than 5, okay? So 6, 7, 8, all to infinity, okay? So we are not going to accept any string of length 2, uh, of length 1 or length 3. So all the strings accepted by this automata have these strings, okay? So we call this the length or the 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 size automata, okay? And we call it's it's uh, called a unary automata. And basically to generate this uh, you have to go to if you're using stranger then you have to use the uh, 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 call the git uh, unary um, um, automata and the so you give it the actual automata like this one and then it will return to you the unary automata now let's go back to the uh, to the algorithm okay so now we see how to compute this is the length the, or the size automata okay or the unary automata that we have seen so this tells us the uh, the length and actually uh, given this one we convert it into one that accepts uh, uh, sigmas instead of if, of uh, just a unary simple okay but anyway so just to simplify things we are going to generate an automata that accepts all strings of lengths such that for each of these lengths there is a string here that has the same length as we see here and we are going to intersect this with the post image of the target after the validation with the validation patch and we are going to take the difference okay so these are the strings in the output of the target that has a length that we do not want but the cause of this length is not because of the validation here it is actually because of the sanitization here missing up with the length okay and Let's look at this simple example. S suppose that this is the post image of the target, okay? Just hypothetical. This is not the actual post image of this target, but just assume that this is the post image. And this is the post image of the of the reference. And this is the length uh, automata that we get from the reference. Of course, the only strings, the difference, the strings that do not have that differ from these strings in length, sorry, this the strings here that differ from these strings in length are BB because BB is if length 2 car is if length 3 there is no there are strings of length 3 here but there is no string of length 2 here okay and this is what we are going to do here we are going to get rid of this excessive or additional uh, length that is caused by the escape operation here okay given this length we are given this difference we are going to compute the pre image of this difference again without the validation patch and then the pre-image here, we call it the uh, uh, the uh, length patch uh, set, and the automata that represented is the length patch uh, automata or DFA. And this automata is for this example, the length patch automata is, is complex, so I'm not going to show it here in this example. So we are going to block this uh, automata. So what we are doing is that we are blocking the strings that result. In, in in a length difference after we do the validation uh, patch and as an example of a string here is a string that we have seen if o uh, single quote so that string is going to have after being escaped it's going to have four characters if o backslash single quote okay uh, which will result in a in a difference in the output so if o single quote is here okay so we are going to generate uh, as uh, a length patch that will be applied after applying the validation patch. So we are getting from problems one by one. And this length patch is going to block anything that is in the language of the the length automata, as we do here. Okay, so stranger match here is a function that we generate that simulates the automata. Now, the final phase now is going to be the min cut. Okay, we got rid of these two problems. Now we're going to move to, to, the, to the sanitization difference. Given the same computation that we did before without doing any new computation, we are going to get 
the set that is after restricting the length here. Okay, so this is the set that has the same lengths as the as the set. So these are the strings that are output by the target after applying the two patches that have the same length as the strings that are output by the reference. They are not the same. It it they should not be. I uh, so they do not have to be the same. Okay, but they have the same length. Okay, so for example, you may have length 3, 4, 6 here, and you have length 3, 4, 6 here, uh, and you may have also length 10 here, uh, but you do not have um, uh, uh, strings that, uh, you may have strings here of length 3 that are not here. So like you have here AAA, here you have BBB. But as long as they have the same length, then that's okay. Okay? So, given this... Uh, uh, restricted length, we are going to intersect it with the uh, post image of the reference, okay, to get rid of the differences that are not caused by uh, uh, by length, okay, so these are the actual strings, so they have the same length, but they are different uh, strings, okay, so we want to get rid of these uh, uh, strings, and basically these strings are the strings that contain less than in our uh, case, okay, so this guy is going to, for example, output less than, less than, this guy is not going to output less than less than because less than is going to be deleted. Okay, so it doesn't have to be it doesn't have to do uh, with with the length here, uh, the uh, filtering operation or the sanitization operation here. Given this uh, uh, output and without assuming the two patches, we are going to generate the uh, compute the post uh, the pre image, and then we are going to apply the. Uh, 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 min cut on this. So this, these are the inputs that resulted in the sanitization difference, which is the third type of differences that we have. Okay, and uh, this is the automata basically. These, these are the inputs that resulted in the sanitization difference, and basically they are less than. You see, like they have less than. So, uh, given this, this is basically the min cut. Okay. Uh, the question is, why don't we, for example, do min cut like this, cut this, cut this, and then cut this, okay, for example, or cut this, uh, because this is actually not just one uh, transition, this represents lots of transitions, okay, we use the ranges, but it represents lots of transitions, okay, so, uh, we want to cut the minimum number of transitions, and this is perfectly the minimum number of transitions, to separate the start state from, or the initial state from the accepting states, and Again, we do not uh, remove transitions from the input. We actually remove characters. So we're going to take the character. And although we have three transitions here, it's the same character. It's the less than. So the min cut is the less than. And we generate the uh, sanitization patch, which is the less than. And this way, we took care of the sanitization difference. OK, so before I move, let me go back just quickly. So on, on this. Uh, uh, on what we have done here. So uh, we started first by the validation patch. We computed the set of uh, strings that are rejected uh, by the reference, but uh, that are rejected by the reference. Then we uh, reject these strings on the target. This way we generate a validation patch that would take care of the difference that results from filtering operations. And then we move on, and then we tried the min cut, it didn't work. So we moved on to the length patch. And in the length patch, assuming the validation patch, we compute the post images. We get the post image of the reference, compute all the lengths using the, D, the unary DFA, and then we intersect and get rid of the unwanted uh, length uh, on the, uh, uh, on the uh, target, the strings that are output by, by the target that have lengths that are not in the output of the reference. We get rid of these strings by computing the pre-image and then generating uh, a patch that blocks this uh, uh, this set. And finally, since we took care of the length problem, now we move to the sanitization problem, the last problem, and given the same computation that we did before, we take the restricted set, the restricted length, so we, they have the same length, but may the, they have may, uh, maybe they may have different strings. For example, we don't have the less than here, and we are going to remove the this sanitization difference by getting the uh, pre-image 
and then doing the min cat which we have seen in the in the previous uh, video and <coughs> this is basically the new function this is the new stronger function that is an acceptable function uh, uh, and it patches the, dif the ref difference between the target and the uh, reference so we use some min cut uh, heuristics so for example if we see that the target the uh, if we see the following if we see that this the input that we need to cut if we see that the min cut results in space character here okay so the min cut gives us space, char a space character so this means that we need to remove space here okay before getting to the target and we check if the reference actually did not delete its space but it actually uh, trimmed the space what we do we look at the uh, uh, the post image of the reference the output of the reference and we check does the output of the reference starts or ends with the space so if all strings in the output of the reference do not start and do not end with a space then we assume heuristically that what the reference did actually is uh, a trim okay so this is one heuristic the second heuristic is the escape so given the min cut characters here we check if these characters actually they were uh, escaped on the uh, on the reference okay so the reference did not delete them but it escaped them and um, uh, we do this by uh, looking at the post image of the reference and then for all the transitions on any character in the min cut we check if it is if they are all always preceded by the same uh, 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 by a transition that has the same character for example all transitions on single code oh no I, I won't use single code because I don't want to I don't want you to confuse with this I'm talking about escaping here on the reference so if for example all transitions that have the uh, the uh, letter uh, a they're always preceded by a backslash to escape the letter a okay so if we find this on the automata that represents the output of the reference then we assume that an escape has been done an escape operation has been done on the on the reference so we do an escape on the target when we do when we generate the sanitization patch so instead of deleting these characters as we do here we actually um, uh, escape them so these are the min cut heuristics we applied the differential repair uh, algorithm on five PHP web applications um, and uh, um, this is the number of pairs that we found in these applications so a client server pair means that the reference is the client and the server is the target so we want to see if the tar server is different than the client so uh, uh, the server client is the reference is the server and the target is the client server server is the both this reference and the target are two server functions that operate on the same field but they are for example in the same application but they're different in different places so you wrote an, an a sanitization function for uh, for example username in two different uh, forms one for registration the other one is for login okay so we compare the two uh, and to make sure that they do the same uh, thing okay so this is the number of pairs okay so this is 122 uh, pairs uh, of functions okay so um, uh, so uh, this is the number of validation patches that we generated uh, you see lots of validation patches so there is lots of validation difference uh, surprisingly uh, compared to sanitization difference. this is the length uh, patches that we generate number of length patches so we generate like 11 means we generated 11 length patches for the client server when we compare the client uh, the server to the client so the reference is the client and this is the number of sanitization patches that we generated and uh, uh, you can see here that the client server actually we didn't find any sanitization difference between the, the, the client and the server where, where the client does more sanitization than the, than the server but we found lots of cases where the client does more validation than the server and this is very bad if a client validates an input in a certain way then the server should validate this the input in the same way okay so we have found 61 cases and I think many of these cases they uh, involve the length okay so the client makes sure that the length of the input is a certain length while the server does not do the same uh, thing so um, um, uh, this is the result of the min cut uh, that we have um, uh, of, of the uh, in, in our experiments so the uh, this is the average size 
of the min cut. So this means that this is the average size of the set of characters that we are going to delete from the input. So for example, the average is four characters. Okay, and um, you see a high average uh, here because of um, um, there are many server side, for example, functions that contain HTML special chars. And HTML special chars, for example, uh, cuts, um, sorry, it replaces many uh, characters, like about four or five characters, okay? So uh, we need to cut these characters on the, on the client, okay? Uh, although this is not the perfect uh, patch, but it's still a very valid patch that can be used to mitigate the problem at least until you come up with an actual uh, more uh, 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 or better or more precise uh, patch like manual uh, patch. Um, this is interesting case we found like in the client client we found one case where the min cut was 15 characters. So the reason here is that the two functions were com the output of the two functions was completely disjoint. So the sets the output of the first function is completely different than the output of the second function. Their intersection is empty. So if you are given two functions, they output completely different output, okay? Let's say that the first function outputs the number two, the second function, uh, or uh, the first function outputs AA, the second function outputs BB, okay? Uh, so how are you going to fix these functions? How are you going to come up with a stronger function? There is, you can't in this case. These functions are disjoint. They do completely different things. Okay. Uh, this is the, these are the results of our uh, heuristics. So we actually detected lots of trims, for example. So the heuristic was successful. So instead of deleting all these spaces as we did here, we actually detected that they are trim. And we checked manually and they were actually trims. Okay. This is escape. So this is very important. Uh, uh, a very important point here is that when you patch the uh, 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 server against the uh, client, um, it's remember that the client is going to be composed with the server. Okay, so we do not compose it, but they are actually composed. So if the server does some sanitization, like escaping, you don't want the client to do this. So actually, when we patch the client against the server, so the client is the reference, the target, and the server is the reference we only do the validation patch because the validation patch is always idempotent but the sanitization patch is not guaranteed to be idempotent and we actually hear the heuristic helps a little bit because it would tell you that look i mean the server is going to escape this okay so don't escape it on the client don't do anything with it on the client okay because you are going to mess it up while the things that are deleted they are kind of they do not uh, generate the although they may generate a little bit of unprecision which is acceptable because we are doing static analysis the whole thing is static analysis so we do over approximations um, but they uh, um, uh, the strings that are uh, that are uh, uh, that are deleted they do not generate uh, idempotency uh, problem so if you delete the same string twice the same character twice it doesn't cause any troubles um, <coughs> So um, this is the uh, performance uh, of the analysis. So I am uh, this all this work is implemented in a tool called Simrip, which is available on um, um, on um, um, the GitHub. Uh, and this is the uh, you see that the length patch generating the length patch takes most of the time, okay, and most of the memory. So the maximum time it took to generate length patch between two functions was 168 seconds. Okay, and the maximum size of the DFA that we generated, uh, the maximum size of the length DFA that we generate, length patch DFA. So remember when we generate a patch, we actually simulate an automata. So what is the size of this automata? It actually contains four, about 5 million BDD nodes. Okay, so if you remember in the string analysis uh, slides, we talked a little bit about the representation of an automata as a BDD. So this is the size, and the BDD node is 16 bytes. So you can do the multiplication here. Um, we, um, okay, so I'll jump this a little bit. So this is the tool Simrip. Uh, uh, so this is available on, in GitHub on VLAB, CS, CSP. The tool is available. The libstranger is available. This part, libstranger, that does the actual computations for the operations, map modeling for the string operations. 
like uh, stimulus special charge, add slashes, the replace operations, the branch conditions, and all this stuff. Okay, this is the post image computation, pre image computation, and negative pre image computation. These are all the symbolic string analysis. We use Mona, uh, we didn't, do, we did not develop Mona. Mona, uh, we use Mona for uh, BDD representation of, of automata for symbolic representation of automata. Um, um, uh, this is the symbolic string analysis component of the SimRep. Uh, this is available alone. You can use it. Um, um, uh, this is Im these are implemented in C. This is implemented in uh, all of this is implemented in C plus plus, and it's also implemented in uh, this is also implemented in Java in another tool called uh, uh, Stranger um, that that. The, that does the uh, policy-based bug det uh, vulnerability detection for PHP that we have seen before. Uh, so the SimRip basically takes two functions as dependency graphs. So we use uh, dependency graphs as an, uh, an intermediate representation to get language agnostic because what we do is semantic repair. So we do not care about this. We, we, we compute the semantics of the code that we have. So we can repair uh, across languages, like given a JavaScript and a Java function in JavaScript and another like on the client and another function Java or PHP on the server. We can repair the two of them against each other because we compute the semantics, the meanings of the of the code. So given the two functions uh, as dependency graphs, uh, and you can find uh, uh, what a dependency graph is, all the details on the on the website. Um, we uh, <coughs> uh, we take the reference and the targets. We compute the difference using the image computation. We generate the patches here, and then uh, we use the MinCut algorithm, uh, which is still written in Java. It's not uh, yet uh, ported to uh, uh, C++ because it's very fast. Uh, uh, it's not uh, as complex as this one, so we didn't need that much optimization for this uh, algorithm. Um, um, the the lib stranger that contains the operations to uh, model the replace and uh, uh, replace operations and other operations, I extended the lib stranger. So it was started by my uh, colleague Fang Yu uh, in, in VLab, uh, our lab at UCSB, and I extended I extended it by uh, implementing a number of optimized replace uh, algorithms. Uh, to model the uh, uh, sanitization functions in PHP and, and uh, JavaScript, like for example, the function add slashes, HTML special chars, uh, trim, uh, two uppercase, two lowercase, all these functions. Um, I implemented uh, the algorithms to compute the post and pre image uh, uh, images of these operations uh, efficiently compared to the uh, original. <coughs> um, uh, original general language replacement algorithm. So the original language replacement algorithm takes care of the whole replace um, um, uh, of any, it can do any replace it, uh, or compute the post image of any replace operations. These ones, they only work for these functions, but they are much uh, faster and, and efficient in terms of time and memory, as we see here. So this, is, this graph shows that if we give an automata that accepts all the strings, all the strings of length 0 to, uh, for example, 0 to 30. All the strings from length 0 to 30, like strings of length 0, 1, 2, 3, all the way to 30. If we give an automata that accepts all these strings, okay, we, <coughs> um, if we give it, uh, if we take it as an input and then we try to compute the post image of this automata on add slashes, uh, operation uh, PHP operation okay so in the code we have add slashes and the input to us before the add slashes was this okay and the sorry the in the program point before the add slashes we got this automata what would be the uh, uh, how much time does it take to compute the post image okay and as you see that the general replace this is a log scale graph and the general replace is even exponential on the leg scale graph so it's it's kind of double exponential and the reason is that there is lots of determinization, automata determinization, and to determine an autom to determinize an automata, converted from an NFA to a DFA, non-deterministic to deterministic, it is an exponential algorithm. Okay, and we do multiple steps, or the general replace uh, algorithm does multiple steps of determinization, while the new uh, uh, the new specialized replaces uh, replace algorithms that, that they implemented that are actually 
um, some of them they do not do any determinization at all like the add slashes the others like HM special charts they do just one determinization and most of the time uh, it, it it does not result in exponential and as we see here uh, they are actually linear the new algorithms in the um, uh, well the old ones are, or the the general replace algorithm is uh, uh, kind of exponential in terms of length and we actually when we reach here when we reach length 8 with the old algorithm we stop because we reach the hard limits of Mona um, so Mona stores the BDDs and uh, it only stores 2 to the power of 24 nodes uh, uh, BDD nodes so um, uh, so to actually this is not the limit of the memory of the or sorry we're talking about time here but here like this is not the limit of the memory of the machine this is the limit of the mona itself which can be uh, it's just an implementation thing okay and we are done with the with this oh I'm going to let me just give a quick uh, uh, comparison with other techniques so there are other techniques uh, like this uh, back and backs from Microsoft so these are two languages, special uh, 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 domain-specific languages to write sanitizers. So the goal of the Microsoft Research uh, is uh, the guys at Microsoft Research by developing these uh, languages. Their goal is to allow the developers of the libraries of PHP and Java to develop correct trim operation and add slashes operation, for example. Okay. Well, the goal of us is that to make sure that the the whole application is correct. So we actually, we actually, when we do our analysis, we assume that these are correct. Okay. So they actually, our work complement, um, uh, complete their, uh, their work completes our work. Okay. So they guarantee us that these are correct, and they use uh, transducers, uh, a restricted class of transducers, uh, to do, uh, to do uh, this. Uh, there is also other work that's based on context-free grammar. Uh, and the problem with the context-free grammar is that you cannot find a difference. The, the context-free grammars are not closed under the difference operation. Uh, so what we have seen before, taking the intersection and the difference, all this stuff, we cannot do it with the context-free grammar. Uh, also, they do not handle path, sens path sensitivity. So basically, there's no, they do not handle any validation. They just handle sanitization. And they do not handle loops. For us, we do widening. Uh, when if the autom if the function extract or the code that we are analyzing uh, and you can refer to the video on the string analysis if the code has loops in it although we didn't give an example that has a loop but if the code has a loop then we can actually do widening okay approximate the result of the loop without unrolling or limiting the number of times that the loop executes okay we can compute the the result after the loop uh, after the loop assuming that the loop would execute for uh, an infinite number of times okay so, um, um, the third technique is the bit vectors uh, based technique, um, and usually these are used uh, along with symbolic execution um, uh, uh, <coughs> techniques. Um, so, in these techniques, they bound the length, and uh, they're used with symbolic execution. So, they bound the loops. They have to unroll the loops uh, in the program. Well, for us, we do not bound the length. We deal with any length. And we do not bound the uh, the loops because we do uh, uh, widening. Uh, there are also other repair techniques. For example, there is the genetic programming based repair, uh, uh, where they basically they given they do not detect bugs. They take a test case that fails. So they assume that there is a bug in the program because a test case fails. And then, given this test case, uh, they take. Uh, the AST, the abstraction tax of the program, and then they start to mutate it by deleting nodes and uh, and um, uh, uh, replacing nodes with each other, uh, moving nodes and all this stuff randomly uh, until the code works. Okay, um, so their work is syntactic; they do not compute any semantics of the application. Um, uh, they need the uh, test cases, uh, which is not the case for us. They do not detect bugs. We detect bugs before fixing. We detect the difference before, before fixing. There's Simfix that uh, also takes test suites to find bugs. And then if the test suite find a bug, they do symbolic execution to get the constraints that resulted in this bug, on the inputs that resulted in this bug. And then they solve the negation of the constraints and synthesize a patch. 
based on this negation. So if this is if this if the if the inputs that resulted this is the constraint that represents the input that resulted in the bug, then let's negate it and then try to synthesize a, a patch uh, based on the other inputs uh, that. <coughs> do not result in the bug. And there's the automatic placement of sanitizers and in this uh, paper, um, I guess also by Microsoft Research, uh, they, um, this, these are not by Microsoft Research by the way, but um, um, uh, uh, this paper, uh, th these are the papers, um, and uh, this paper is, uh, what it does is that it tries to automatically uh, place the sanitizers so you give it the program and then you give it a policy saying like this source and this sink, these are the sanitizers that we should apply before the, between this source and this sink. Okay, and then they try to automatically place these sanitizers uh, in your program uh, to guarantee the, the problem that no item potency problems happens, for example, like double escaping and this stuff. So um, um, uh, the difference from our work is that they can they assume that there is no custom validation or sanitization in the program that would mess up with their uh, with the placement of the sanitizers. Uh, um, while well, for us we do not uh, have this problem, we can deal with custom validation and sanitization in the uh, program. And uh, by this, these are the list of publications uh, that I uh, uh, that I have. <coughs> uh, that are accepted uh, and uh, <coughs> uh, thanks for uh, listening and hopefully that you enjoyed it